Hi, I'm Andy from the Philadelphia Barber Company. We're here in Fishtown, Philadelphia. I'm going to be cutting uh, Derek's hair and trimming up his beard. Um, we're going to be doing two around the sides. I'm going to be fading a one up around the ear, giving him a natural back back here, and giving more of a gradient fade as we go down. I'm going to trim up the top so we can push it back and give him a nice kind of pompadour style with lots of volume. Um, and just going to kind of trim up the straggles here, line up his beard, and make him look as handsome as possible. Let's do it. So I'm going to start with a three because I like to have kind of a longer length um, up at the crown of his head so I can have more of a natural length as it is being pushed back. I think when you bring the buzzer up too high, you kind of forfeit um, that natural pushed back flowy look. So I use a three on the crown first and kind of go all the way around. I dip it a little bit lower back here so the hair has something to sit on. His cowlick is hidden up here. We've been pushing it back so much that his cowlick isn't really an issue. For a lot of people it is. Um, and that's why I usually keep it a little bit lower. So I'm just going to go all the way around. And this is going to be my base length. So the two is going to be mainly right here. And I'm going to be following those lines that I created up here, but with the two. And then go a little bit lower than my baseline, following that line up. Open your guard. This is a two and a half, blending all the way up to that three that I created. I'm going to go over as much as possible so you don't have little frills sticking out. You want as even as it may as possible. So going over a few times won't do you any harm at all. I'm going to take my one and I'm just going to go over his ear. I don't want to create too high of a fade with the one. I want to create more of a gradient fade. So just by going maybe less than an inch over his ear and creating kind of an arc, a rainbow going around. I'm going to be coming back later to fade this in, but for now, I'm going to leave that thick there. I'm going to follow around and keep it low still because we don't want that high one fade. We just want it to be a natural gradient fade. I'm going to do the same thing over this ear as I did on the other ear. Take my one and a half and fade up with that first. So I can fade, this is a one and a half open, so it's closer to that two that I created first. And I'm going to go up with it and fade it into that two. I'm going to come back to my one, pop it on there, open it up all the way. So that's a one and a half, and fade that into what I just created with that one and a half right around the ear. And fade in that line. I'm pressing a little bit lighter and flicking up more so I don't create any more unnecessary lines. Sometimes I like to press on the skin here so it's as taut as possible. And then I can get into that fade a little bit more. Here, I'm going to kind of even out the fade here. I'm going to put my two back on, open it up all the way, and kind of really just go up, blending it in. So we've already created this base, so we can come back around with it again. I'm going to close it for a full two. The trick with haircuts is reading the skull shape. 
Derek's skull goes in a little bit right here, so you can see it's a little bit darker there. Sometimes you have to manually go around to take your comb. I have a weird head shape on your It's okay, we still love you. <laughs> Uh, so you go around, press your comb here, you can kind of see the excess here, and manually go around. You want this fade to look as clean as possible. Sometimes it needs a little bit of manual TLC. I make sure I bring my comb out as much as possible or else you're going to create a hole in the hair and then you just ruined all of the work that you did. So I'm going to leave this for now. I'm going to come back to that. Right now I'm going to give him a natural fade in the back. I like to take a bristle brush rather than a comb. That allows the hair to be brushed all the way down because you're going to be going in an up motion with your, your machine. And I make my guideline here with a zero. Some people like to go straight across. I personally like to kind of go up a little bit, round it the corner up, because that's how a natural hairline is gonna come down. No one wants that little, some people want the little box. I think a natural hairline grows out better, makes the haircut last longer. And then I open my guard. Create another guideline that's the same shape. Follow that line. Then I go halfway and fade that chunk, if you will, back in. And now I have this line. This is a one right here. So I'm going to take my half guard. Pop it on. Open it up all the way so it's essentially a one. That way if you go a little bit too high, you're at one right here anyways. But you're just on your way to fading that line in. And again, I kind of take the skin and pull it down so you're not getting caught on any skin there. Close it. Flick up so you're not making your line too high and just flip all around. You can play with opening it, going back to that one. So I'm going to be getting around his ears with my trimmer. I use a wall mag. Um, it has a blade that will pop off and on and it's really quiet, which I really like and really, really liked. Um, I prefer to use cordless so you don't get tangled up. Um, here, I like to leave it as natural as possible unless otherwise specified. Um, if there's little hairs that are kind of not supposed to be there, I'll get those. Um, but unless someone asks me to kind of line them up, I'll leave it natural. And I pull the ear down, creating an arc, flip my machine around. And I really only use the corner. If I were to press down, I'd be going into his beard. And that's not what we want. So you make your line and then kind of take the excess off. Here, I usually just begin to fade the beard in, although I'm going to be coming back to this later anyways. But since I'm here and I have my tool, I'll grab the hair. You can see it's a lot longer here than it is here. And the more you pull out, the more you'll be naturally fading it in. Sometimes you gotta kind of move angles around depending on where their ear is or how big your hands are. I've got tiny hands so I can move around it. A lot of people like to use guards on their machines to do this. I like to do it manually. I think it creates more of that natural effect. I use the word natural a lot. Um, because my goal is for my, my clients' haircuts to last as long as possible and uh, for them to be able to style it themselves comfortably and be as confident as possible without having to come to the barbershop all the time to get that confidence. I want them to have it at home as well. And then I follow, there's a bone right here and you can kind of feel the bone and instead of going straight in and chopping up that hairline, you want to go where it naturally comes down. So I just follow where that naturally becomes a little bit more sparse and just clean it up. 
and then come down around where that zero was, where I created that line. So now it comes around naturally and goes down into the base. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now from here, we want to blend in this weight line right here. I'm going to do a little bit of a combination of using my machine and my shears. I like using shears a lot more in this area to create better flow. But for now, since this is a really heavy weight line, I'm going to use my machine for now. And it's better to see how heavy that is right here. Flick your comb out so you don't create a hole. And come from the bottom. And that way you don't go too short on that, that line and just create a natural flow going around. And again, this isn't the final blend into the top. This is just to kind of get me started on making that line less thick. In the back, since you don't want such a harsh line, instead of coming up, sometimes I'll take it and I'll just go straight across and then come up. So this isn't fully blended. I'm gonna do the majority of that with my scissors, my shears. I'm gonna wet his hair down. You notice I'm pushing it back. That's the direction that he styles his hair. So you want to put it in the direction that he's going to be doing it every day or else it's not going to represent what he does and how he looks on a daily basis. I use a Tori Hanzo shears. These shears um, are combination shears. They are for wet and dry hair. I mainly use them on wet hair because I have shears that are specifically for dry hair. Um, but I like to start back here. If you go too short on this palette area, you're in big trouble. If you cut it too short, it's going to spring straight up and they're going to look like a cockatoo. And that's not So I like to start here. This I need to leave thicker so it can blend in here. And we're going to be blending this in later. But I take this section about an inch section. With Derek, I usually take an inch to half an inch, depending on how badly he needs his haircut. Does that look like a good amount to you? <laughs> yeah? Okay. So I cut straight across. I'm going to be coming in later and adding some texture. You cut straight across for your guideline. Take about another inch section. And then you see that that's your guideline that you just created there. And cut across. And I'll kind of even it up over here. I'm going at a bit of an angle because that's how their head is shaped. If you just cut straight across, you're going to look like a box. You want to create almost a square shape, but not too much of the corners. You want it to be natural. There's that word again. I tend to take less as I go forward. So I started with both about an inch back here, but then I took less as I went forward because we want his hair to be a little bit longer in the front so it can fall back more easily. When I start to get to the front section, I'll section off that kind of bang area and pull it down. And so for this part, instead of cutting straight across like what I did with the rest of it, I'm going to point cut it a little bit more so he doesn't have those blunt bangs. You can see it's a little bit more jagged. It's still even, but it's creating more texture, more flow. I like to rest my fingers or my, my shears on my fingers. So, you know, you want to protect their eyeballs, obviously. There's this corner here. Then I come back around, brush it back. It's a style he does. You can cross check it. You can cross check it by coming back. And before we were doing 
this way. And you come back through the other way. So this is the cross. So you can see almost the discrepancy from the front length now and from what we created back here. And there's that length right there. So we want to get rid of that. Why we do that one do it on the same, see this arc here, uh, yeah. like that, like that. Oops, same on this yeah. corner. After I have the length that I want, and I want to add some texture, I'll come back around, I'll point cut. I like to use only my thumb, or else you're going to start breaking and bending the hair if you start to do go like this. And you're protecting your wrist by going this way rather than like this, you're going to hurt yourself. And I'm not taking length off this way, I'm going almost in between the hairs to create texture. That's going to make his hair lighter and have better flow. Some people use texturizing shears to thin it out. I think you have less control that way because it's more of a uniform when you do it. Shears that people like to use. But I like to do it on my own. Now I need to blend in the crown. Again, I like to use my scissors, my shears for this area. Pull it out just like we were doing with the uh, with the machine. And again, it's important to have just your thumb moving. I hold my scissors a little bit differently than everyone else. You're supposed to have your, your ring finger in there. I'm more comfortable doing it this way. I like to pull this down. If that's a little bit too long there, if he's kind of having a messy hair day, this is going to flop over and it's going to look like I didn't blend it properly. So when you pull it all back, I like to kind of take maybe just a centimeter of hair more, just these little tiny hairs, and even them up. So it has that flow that I was talking about. You can check in the mirror to see if there's any hair that you missed. So see right here, there's some hairs that I need to go back over. You can't see that when you're looking right here. It looks fine. But when you look and you see the symmetry here, it's off. So you check in the mirror. I like to look in the mirror. Touch it, touch where I see this poking out, see where I'm touching it, and then come back around. My goal with a lot of hairstyles is to still look great without any hair product. The hair product is just a bonus. The hair product is just going to make you look 110% better, even though you can look 100% great without it. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. If the hair starts to get a little bit dry, just spray it again. You can give it more direction that way, move it around a little bit more. So there are those corners. I brush it in that direction and then see what's left. And that's almost the bridge from your fade to the scissor portion of the hair, to the longer length. There's a white wall behind you. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to see, especially if they have dark hair. You can kind of see the contrast of the hair on that white wall. That always helps me. I like where my station is positioned because of that white wall. Now we just have to blend in the back. And it's the same deal as the sides. This area, I'll take my fingers and see if there's any length that doesn't belong. You see that there's that corner there that doesn't belong there. So you see, he still has this fun length to push around, but we want it to be as blended as possible into the sides without being 
too short, too stubby, where there's no movement. His haircut is all about movement. So while this is still dry, I'm going to move on to his beard. After I do his beard, I'm going to blow dry it and check everything. And make sure this is the most important part for me to make sure it's blended. So that's what I'm going to do last after I blow dry it and somewhat style it. So moving on to his beard now, we already kind of saw this area here. You can check in the mirror and see how well you blended yeah, that, how well you did right it. You can come back and get those straggles. I like to clean up this line here. Not so much where you're cutting into his beard. His natural beard line kind of comes down here. Just like how this bone comes down here. You want to come a little bit down. And just clean it up. We're not giving him a full beard trim with a lot of length taken off. So you just want to clean up those areas. Sometimes he's got a little ear hair. You just want to clean up those areas that are going to look messy and unkept. I like to work on one side and then go to the next side so I'm not running around like crazy going in circles. And so I want to line up his beard here, making sure I don't cut into his beard. So I look at his lip line and where this arcs and starts to become more scarce. So arcs here, lip line, and down. Thankfully trimmers have a nice straight angle there. You just work your way down, stop. You can always take it lower if you need to, but it's safer to do the bare minimum and create that shape. You can come around with the straight razor at the end and make it straighter and tighter, which I will be doing. So I'm going to move on to his mustache now. Some people prefer to grow out their mustache and push it to the side. <laughs> uh, Derek likes to keep it kind of trimmed up. So I like to, sometimes you got to find, everyone's lips are shaped differently. Uh, Derek has a nice bow right here, and so you want to follow that. If you just take this and just make a, a shape, it's, you're not going with his natural lip line. So brush it all the way down. And I go bit by bit so I can kind of find their lip. Go around that bow. So you can see I went here and then do the same thing. I love using the corners on my machine. And I like this machine specifically because this blade is smaller than most T-liners. And although it is really sharp, like most T-liners, it, it, it's not too sharp to the point where you're gonna cut someone if it's at the wrong angle. When I wanna get in there more, I'll take this, just like I was doing with the hair, watch out for the nose, and pull it out, and I'll go down. I find when I go up against it, you're just aggravating the hair, you're breaking it, and it won't look uniform. I'll kind of pull their lip out and make sure I'm getting all of the hair out of the corners. Get a little bit. And I'll still come back through with that straight razor. So now that we have them all lined up, natural lines, natural lines, all I want to do is clean up these straggles here. And I'm not going to use my machine because that natural word is key. So I'm going to be taking my Hanzos, Hattori Hanzos that are meant for dry hair. And if you look at them head on, you can see what doesn't belong. This little bit here, this little bit here. And I could have gotten that with my machine when I went around, but I didn't want to make it too blunt. So we can 
go around and just shape it accordingly. I want to go more up and down with his beard. Some people like it more full. You can see his is dropping down and he likes to comb it down. So by doing that, go around and trim up. Protect their ears. And trim the little hairs that don't belong. If you look at his profile, you can see that his beard is sloping down. So you want to follow that and go down with it. I'm going to brush it out as much as possible because when you wash your beard, it tightens up and tightens up into that, that shape that you want. And if you don't brush it out, then you're going to be missing some chunks. And if it tightens up, then those chunks that you missed are going to show. So I only did this side. I haven't done this side yet. And I use that white wall behind me to kind of check. Sometimes I like to get head on. It might be a little invasive. People don't know where to put their eyes. They're looking up. But I like to go up and again create that up and down parallel shape to their face. We want to check the length on the beard as well. He didn't want much off the length, but he did say if there was any long straggling hairs, we could get those just to clean it up. Can you look up a little bit for me? There you go. So you see the underneath right here is a little bit too much. When you looked at that profile view, you wanted to have it kind of sloping down, and this creates the bulge at the bottom. We don't want that. I tend to kind of get a little too active when I'm cutting hair and, and go underneath, but I think it's important to be able to see it from all angles. And ultimately, I'll be checking it in the mirror. Mirrors never, ever lie. You can look at it all you want. Pictures never lie, mirrors never lie. Instagram filters lie. They do. <laughs> Check it from all angles. Kind of like cross-checking the top of the hair. My shirt's black, so when I'm standing behind there, it's harder to see because his beard is also black. So I kind of like to move away, use the lighting, Use the wall behind me. Do you like that length? Do you like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Less is more with his beard today. Sometimes we, we shorten it up if he wants to make it a little bit thicker here, but right now he's kind of rocking the longer beard and that gets a little bit thinner down here, but that's where the length comes from. And again, some people like to take the trimmer and go down with it and make it really tight here. That's not our goal. We want it to look as natural as possible. I'm going to get the straight razor here when I shave the back of his neck, that's going to be last. But now I want to blow dry his hair and check this area here to make sure it's all one piece and all together. A lot of times with beard trims, I will put people back, they'll be laying on their back and it will create a big bump right here. So that's why I blow dry the hair after a beard trim. Also, also with his hair, my secret weapon is hair tonic. So what do you like about hair tonic? I love hair tonic because it takes some of the frizzy hairs away and it allows me to create a better shape because everything's all in together. And the blow dryer creates a lot of volume, which is great, but if there's too much volume, it's, it misrepresents the haircut, it misrepresents the style. So if it's a little bit heavier, then you can shape it in better and create a better hair. Now I'm blow drying it all back. I use a Denman vent brush. A vent brush helps create more volume. We want more volume in the front. It creates volume by letting the air pass through the holes with the hair. So I grab the hair and bring it up. Pulling it up at the root. So here I like to just check my work. There's some corners here that I want to get in. 
and I do that at the very end. Since we started with the three, I'm going to be taking a four. I'm going around the crown of his head. Flicking up, because I still want to keep that sheer work that I did. Take your three again, keep working down to create that perfect fade. Then making sure you flick up so you don't cut into the sheer work. You can see there's still some weight here. So I like to use my texturizing shears for this rather than thinning it out like some people do. I think it gives it a really nice natural effect. By taking some weight out of that line. You can see that nice blend that we created with the shears. As you turn to the next side, check in the mirror, make sure that this was symmetrical. This is a little heavy here. We can kind of texturize that out. Now his hair has movement, but it's all blended in. He can kind of toss it to this side and it's still all one piece. I want him to just be able to run his fingers through his hair and be solid, be golden with it. How do you feel? Feel great now. Yeah? Hair looks great. I like to show them all around their hair. Make sure they know what the back of their head looks like. Where's this gray better. patch? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's actually right here. Oh, yeah. You see how it's a little bit lighter there? Yeah. So I had to go around and fade it in manually, but that's never going to be any darker unless you make it darker yourself. It's getting showing. old. <laughs> hmm? It's getting old. Just wise. Yeah. Uh, so show them the fade in the back, make sure they like how it looks. I always like to make them aware, you know, your head, head shape is this, so maybe it's a little bit darker right here, but it's going to grow in all together and not have any unevenness. So the last thing I like to do, I'm going to clean them up. Powder, talcum powder is great for this. If someone has sticky skin and the little hairs are sticking everywhere, get them all off. And I forgot to mention, we leave the underneath of his beard natural, so I didn't line him up. A lot of people like to line up their beards, but he's been blessed with a very great natural line down there. So we just leave that alone. I like to use a warm towel on the back of the neck. Softens up the skin and feels great. Sometimes I press into the pressure points there. Tuck this in. I've already prepared my blade. So that's in here already. Get some hot lather. I'll start on the neck. Get a little bit there. And since we did do the cheeks, I'm gonna put a little bit on his cheeks. If I were to have lined him up around and created a shape, I would get it all the way around, but we leave it a little bit more natural for Derek. So it's just really the cheeks that we worry about. And just go over those lines that we created. Here I'm just going over those lines that I, I created with my trimmer. Now I have the opportunity to make them a little bit straighter, a little bit tighter. With the straight razor you want to make the skin as tight as possible or else you're going to skip on the skin and potentially cut someone. Right. So you said no hair product, right? No, I think it looks great without. Because that natural look, right? <laughs> All right, and we are done. This is Derek. I'm Andy. This is the Philadelphia Barber Company in Fishtown, Philadelphia. And I think that's a wrap.
Thanks for watching this video. Beardbrand has launched a private community called The Alliance. It's for men who are looking to invest in themselves and who are looking to keep on growing. Click the link over there and come join us or stick around and watch some more awesome videos.